Medical information obtained from our website or on the live show is not intended to be a substitute for professional care. If you have, or you suspect you might, have an illness or other medical condition, you should consult a health care provider. The opinions expressed on this radio program are not necessarily those of the sports doctor, this radio show, or their sponsors. Hey, everybody. Welcome live from Chicago. It's the Sports Doctor. I'm Dr. Bob Weil, sports podiatrist. All things sports medicine, fitness, and wellness brought to you by Global Schoolwear, School Uniforms by Tommy Hilfiger, Lower Extremity Review and MVP Parent Magazines, and UK Health Radio. We've got a great doubleheader, Dr. Sam Byrne. He's a holistic optometrist. He's a leading specialist in behavioral eye health. He's joining me along with Shalane Miller, athletic sports kinesiologist, recently consulting with Chesapeake Films and our longtime friend Joel Franco's the upcoming documentary that we've been so involved with, Where Our Children Play, Challenge of Youth Sports, and the Sports Doctors in, some Bob Guider wisdom, some emails. Dr. Sam Byrne, welcome to the Sports Doctor. Thanks, Dr. Bob. Great to be here. Give us some background on yourself, and uh, you could throw in a definition of holistic optometrist while you're at it. <laughs> Sounds good. So when you go for an eye exam, you know, the doctor has you read the eye chart, and you get the reading 2020, that's a measurement of your eyesight. But vision is how the eyes and the brain and the body work together. So eyesight is only one part of vision. So as a holistic eye doctor, I look at the eyes as an interrelated, interconnected part of the body. And there are things that you can do to improve your vision even as you get older. And that's kind of the difference between the regular eye care. They just say your eyes get worse as you get older. In my, uh, in my practice, people get older and their eyes get better. Uh, that's exciting. You know, we featured for years on the sports doctor, Dr. Sam, uh, hand-eye coordination, all sorts of eye exercise, sports optometrists talking about enhancing performance uh, regardless of the, of the sport. And there's a lot of exciting uh, information in, in that side, you know, besides the um, uh, run-of-the-mill eye care. Like you said, there's so much more involved, even as a diagnostic tool, I know like podiatry, where many times we might see diabetes for the first time because of a foot symptom, you also might see it when you see changes in the eyes, right? Well, exactly, because the eyes have one of the highest metabolic needs of the body, highly concentrated with those tiny blood vessels. So it's one of the entryways into the body, like the foot, and you can pick up disease very early, and of course, in diabetes, This is a real vulnerable area, talking about the retina. So, you know, if you have glucose levels that are off the charts or you're pre-diabetic, you're going to see it in the eyes. It's going to be one of the first places, and then you can treat it by doing some holistic things if you want to. Well, you talk about embracing your body's ability to strengthen healing balance. And again, we talk so much about holistic medicine, uh, what are complementary medicine on so many different topics. And the, uh, uh, this sounds like this fits in absolutely, uh, with a big emphasis on prevention, uh, as well as, um, awareness and education. You know, it's being proactive, you know, just with diet alone, the eyes and the brain make up about 2% of the body weight and use 25% of the food intake. So if you cut out processed foods and sugar and mostly gluten, and you eat, you know, the colorful vegetables and berries, get enough healthy fats in your diet, that in itself can keep your eyesight healthy and well as you get older. You know, it's so common to see children at younger and younger ages routinely with glasses, although glasses now are styling. You know, in some ways. Uh, but do you feel that there's the introduction of uh, corrective eyeglasses too early, or are we really paying big attention to prevention? Well, when you get glasses as a child, what it's 
doing is it's reinforcing the problem that's causing the need for glasses to begin with. So, you know, again, back to the holistic perspective, I find the cause and treat that. And we know that the eyes originate from the brain. And so if you do eye exercises, not only are you changing the brain, but you're also changing the eyes. And of course, the other thing that's going on with kids is screen time. So the more screen time they have, this is really wreaking havoc. And then with COVID, uh, where schools were just online, I got so many complaints from parents and kids about eye strain, eye fatigue, red eyes, blurred vision, dry eye, and so on. So I think the screens are another factor we have to look at in terms oh, of... Oh, yeah, I, the gigantic the factor. The, uh, the whole mental health angle in so many different ways uh, in, in uh, all ages, uh, it, it's the biggest topic. It's, it's interesting, no matter where my guest is from, whatever their vocation is from anywhere in the world, they, everybody's concerned about mental health. And uh, social media uh, is, again, is such a challenge, uh, to say the least. And, and again, the screen uh, effects on the eyes and whatever, that's got to be a whole new world, I would imagine. Well, more and more research is coming out about the damaging effects of the artificial blue light. It's a chaotic frequency, and... First of all, it messes with our circadian rhythm if we're staring at a screen after 6 p.m., suppresses the melatonin, as you know. But it also can dry the eye tissue out. And, you know, in severe cases, it can start to cause things like macular degeneration and cataracts. Oh, yeah, so I think we need, need to, to pay attention. That's one of the reasons I wanted to have you on. We need to pay attention um, to that. Mm-hmm. Uh, as well as, you know, you talk about the eyes and the brain, the eyes and the brain. We feature so much information on the sports doctor, on the world of concussions with experts all around the world. Want to get one of your perspectives. When we come back, everybody's talking. Uh, at, uh, everybody, it's the sports doctor. Go to my website, sportsdoctorradio.com. If you go over to radio shows, you can go back years, all sorts of topics, local guests, national guests, international guests, an endless array of topics. Listen to whatever you would like. You go over to newspaper articles and magazines, great information, a lot of excitement with MVP Parent Magazine, a lot of excitement, the upcoming documentary where our children play the whole world of youth sports. We have thousands and thousands of followers. Uh, and you can follow me at Sports Doc, DOC Radio, on Twitter. I can't tell you how many guests we get uh, from uh, Twitter and LinkedIn over the years. We're speaking with Dr. Sam Bernie, the holistic um, optometrist, again, behavioral eye health. Um, I wanted to ask you, Sam, again about your thoughts with the world of concussions and the, um, the whole eye connection. So I've done research and published on traumatic brain injury and vision. I've also worked in hospitals, written articles, It's a huge problem today in sports. I mean, it's not just the NFL, but what happens is when we get hit in the head, it reverberates into the nerves and muscles in the eyes. Now, the problem is we don't pick these up on an MRI. So you've got these soft symptoms like blurred vision, double vision, memory issues, balance issues. You know something's wrong, but the traditional eye exam misses it. So when you go to somebody like me, we're testing things like visual tracking, visual focusing, visual reaction time, peripheral vision, depth perception. And we're looking at how the visual system has been impacted. And then once we get the diagnosis, we can do physical therapy on the eyes to repair the damage that occurs from these traumas, concussions, and so on. Yes, just last week we had Mike Pia. He's the CEO of HitCheck which is a whole, uh, it's an app, a system of having a baseline uh, available for any particular athlete, whatever the sport happens to be. So if there is an incident involving head trauma, they can have something immediately to look at. And again, this uh, idea of the, uh, the whole eye effect. What's the best website uh, for information, Sam, on you, your writings, and, and uh, uh, the, your whole world? I'm DrSamBurn.com. I have thousands of videos that are free on there, also written blogs. 
You can also find me on Facebook and TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, yeah. LinkedIn, and YouTube. I the man's everywhere. Of... You know, what's interesting, Dr. Sam, is, again, we've yeah. talked with optometry and eye experts, ophthalmologists, Again, high performance. I had a whole group of race car drivers talking about their hand-eye and their, their uh, mm. vision uh, training. But the idea of eye protection in youth sports, um, uh, I would think we're not paying nearly enough attention to that. What are your thoughts? Oh, I totally agree. I mean, I think when you get hit in the eye, it's, it really causes a lot of problems. You know, circulation issues and and double vision, blurred vision, you've got to use protective eyewear, especially with kids uh, and they're playing in contact sports. It's a no-brainer. You know, we recommend it, it all you know, the It's time. amazing. It's, it's a, you know, I, the three words I stress all the time on the sports doctor for decades is awareness. We're talking about what are we talking about here? Education regarding learning about and the topic, whatever it happens to be, and then positive action. And this fits right smack in the middle of that when you think about the vast majority of kids, regardless of the sport, uh, where they're running and jumping and doing all sorts of things, um, I, you just don't see many goggles unless there's someone who wears glasses and then they get maybe prescriptions or whatever. Uh, are we making progress there? I think a little bit, you know, especially in sports like lacrosse and squash and racquetball. But, you know, in basketball or football or baseball, no, I don't think we're making enough inroads there. You're right. It takes education and being proactive. And, uh, you know, we need to do a better job of PR getting that stuff out there. And, the uh, you know, again, like when we talk in the term baseline, is having a, a baseline, like you talked about, the kind of visual analysis you might be doing to establish these different connections, again, eye, brain, et cetera, all these different effects, and being able to have that as another one of the baselines. So if there is, again, some sort of trauma, and, uh, again, concussion is a gigantic concern, uh, all sorts of questions, when is it safe to go back? We've come a long way, baby, but we still have a long, long way to go. Um, that might be uh, another idea if it's for uh, – your world, which is having that baseline available uh, for athletic directors and or coaches. Um, hey, did we start a whole new thing or what, Sam? <laughs> you know, th this, this starts another protocol. We already have the concussion protocol. Now we need yes. to bring the vision piece into it. And that could actually be part of the baseline and whether or not, you know, when an athlete can actually go back into competition. You know, again, like you said, uh, getting older and uh, a lot of the changes and the eye changes and a lot of the different, different concerns and the idea that, again, the eye exercises should be a routine part of what we do. And, uh, man, that's another real challenge in that uh, uh, I, with the different eye specialist optometrists that I remember seeing in the past, I don't know if I ever had anybody talk to me about eye exercise. <laughs> You know, we don't we don't really emphasize it in school, but you know, in my own vision, I had very bad vision when I was a child. I was very myopic, and I met a doctor who did this physical therapy, and I completely reversed my myopia. I don't wear any glasses uh, 30 years later, so I'm a living example that you can do it. And the eyes and brain have a plasticity. That's the thing. And if you offer them new experiences, new pathways. You can improve your vision. And I think it's coming more into things like occupational therapy, physical therapy, in some of the private schools, in sports. But I think in regular eye care, we're so geared towards looking for disease and using pharmaceuticals and drugs and surgery that there's no place for exercises. Yeah, God bless America. You know, that's always yeah. been one of the challenges in so many different areas, which is, you know, you have American medicine, which is a pill surgery, uh, doctor visits, uh, and then you have the whole uh, uh, Eastern holistic world. Uh, and, uh, you know, years and years ago, we would talk about acupuncture. We would talk about mindfulness, mind body, and medicine didn't know how to spell it. I think they've um, uh, come along. How is the general medical world um, uh, pay attention to your perspective regarding eye care or the 
optometry and ophthalmology world, Dr. Sam? Well, I think it's slowly changing because in the grassroots, the patients are asking for it. And because there's so much emerging in the area of nutrition, functional medicine, acupuncture, as you say, by the way, many of the meridians in the body go to the eyes. And so liver, gallbladder, you know, those affect the eyes. Oh, yes. Plus like tapping, you know, the emotional, yes. emotional, uh, emotional uh, tapping, uh, ETP, mm-hmm. which we yes. feature a lot, you know, again, again, those uh, um, uh, points to make positive changes uh, in, in the body. It's funny. Years ago, they would say alternative medicine. And that was, oh, you would start more arguments. So somebody, they, you know, they said, hey, what about complementary? And I think, you know, that makes uh, uh, so much more sense. Uh, and again, in the area of high performance, uh, mm-hmm. I think, again, that this is something that seems to be paid more and more attention, you know, thinking about that guy in the batter's box or whoever's hitting a ball or moving in different directions, the, the whole eye acuity, these are things that can really be improved, can't they? Oh, my God. I've worked with baseball players, golfers, volleyball players, uh, wide receivers. You know, it's all about reaction time, keeping your balance, tracking the ball while you're, you know, up in the air. So there's no question that sports vision is a huge, you know, it's a huge support for athletes that want to, you know, play at a higher level. You know, it's interesting. My my, my world in the world of figure skating, the 2010 men's Olympic gold medalist, Evan Lysacek, grew up here. He was 10 years old. I put orthotics. Uh, many times we're talking about alignment and precision and efficiency. We could say orthotics. We could talk about uh, sometimes correction, the idea of strengthening and exercise. And we would have experts like Sheila Thielen with her vestibular training where these athletes mm-hmm. are doing, you know, triple flips and all these flips. And the idea of the eyesight, being able to know where you are in space, was something they were paying big attention to. I can't believe... Give me the website real quick, Sam. They could find Dr. out everything about yeah, it. I'm Dr. sorry I ran over. Dr. Dr. SamBird.com. Thanks for having Dr. me on. Dr. Sam Byrne. Yeah, Sam, hold on. Hold on, Sam. We'll be right back. Sports Doctor. The station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. Everybody, it's Dr. Bob Weil, a sports doctor. I'm excited to announce the release of my new book, co-written with Sharky Zartman, hashtag Hey Sports Parents, an essential guide for any parent with a child in sports. You know, Sharky is a former Hall of Fame volleyball player. She's the mom of two daughters who became Division I volleyball players. Together, we have over 70 years of combined youth sports experience. The goal of the book give you the essential tools and guidance to make your experience as a sports parent the best it can be. Hashtag Hey Sports Parents is divided into four sections. The first section, Sports Parenting 101. Sharky talks everything about uh, parenting, about coaching, that whole uh, interaction between parents and coaches, coaching your own kid. Uh, what's the, what are the things to really pay attention to? The second section is the Sports Doctors In, yours truly. Uh, My discussion of injury prevention and treatment, choosing the best shoes, youth sports and drugs, essential exercises, the dilemma of youth football, orthotics. Third section, uh, experts speak out. We bring together eight different experts in nutrition and sports performance and mental training in all aspects of coaching in that section. The last section is the parent's perspective, some insights from about a half a dozen parents of athletes. So everyone, hey, get out your megaphone, spread the word. Now available on Amazon. Order now. You'll be more confident. So will your young athlete. Hashtag, hey, sports parents.
everybody, we are back live from Chicago. It is the Sports Doctor. I'm Dr. Bob Wild, sports podiatrist. I want to welcome Lane Miller, athletic sports kinesiologist, and she's recently consulting uh, with uh, my friend at the new upcoming documentary where our children play the challenge of youth sports. Uh, Shailene, welcome to the Sports Doctor. Hey, Dr. Bob. Thank you so much for, for having me. Super excited to be here today. Great. Give us some background on you and your uh, uh, beginning to be doing some consulting with the documentary. Yeah, so um, consulting with uh, my partner, Joelle, him and I met back when I was finishing uh, my master's at Indiana University and um, during that time studying kinesiology and nutrition. Um, I was working with um, youth sports and then kind of a little bit with um, collegiate athletics as well um, with a focus on that um, kinesiology and nutrition aspect. And uh, when Joe and I, Joelle and I uh, connected, that's when we we started. Um, I was hearing about his documentary and a little bit about um, the kids and what he was doing um, and, and how we just connected from there. You know, it's interesting that uh, right from the, I don't know how many years ago it was that I first had Joel on the show and we would talk at the funny story and he was saying, Doc, you know, youth sports, man, it's what a challenge. It's like a $14 billion a year business, all these challenges. And then as we go along, we would be talking a year, six months later, he'd say, hey, you know, it's a $16, 17000000000 billion. Now we're on the radio. He said, you know, it's a twenty twenty five business. And uh, the point is, is that it's big, big business. There's all sorts of pressures. The reason I wrote, co-wrote the book, Hashtag A Sports Parents, was the epidemic in capital letters of youth sports overuse injuries, physically and mentally. So, the, you know, the famous kinesiotherapist, the late Bob Guida, who I spent 40 years with, people, athletes all over the world came to work and train with him, the kinesiology, how do the muscles work, how does the body work, uh, and uh, being able to take... Uh, uh, those skills, along with the, the world of nutrition, um, you're looking to make available more and more information for individuals who are going to be involved um, watching the documentary and learning about the challenges of the youth sports, whether it's coaches or parents or these young kids yourself. What are you looking to um, um, add to that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, with the programs and consulting, in addition to uh, the documentary here and just bringing awareness um, to how how much it's become a business, um, really just to educate not only the children themselves and not just tell them what to do, but how to do it and why they're doing it and educate the parents as well. Um, I always think of, of what I studied and why I studied it and, and the human body and all that in general um, and nutrition is because it's not something that's taught um, in grammar school or, or in public schools. I mean, you might have a, a basic health class. But, uh, you know, if I didn't study the things I knew about the body, um, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know how to take care of myself. I wouldn't know these things. I wouldn't know how to prevent these injuries, um, thinking back to to being in, in sports as a, as a child myself. You know, I didn't know why I was doing what I was doing. I was doing it because my coach told me to do it, and I thought they knew what they were talking about. Yes, um, so the, just, the challenges of families being involved for decades on the sports, Dr. Shailene, we have had experts in every area i put half of them together for for joel and for the <laughs> documentary the idea of the kinds of pressures we all know about the overzealous parent on the sidelines we also know about the overzealous sometimes abusive coaches and we also know that a lot of times these kids aren't having fun anymore because they're in so much competition so early and organizations that have really paid attention to this. In a couple of weeks, I have John Angie back on. Uh, the National Alliance of Youth Sports, Shailene, they celebrated their 40th year of um, coaching coaches and educating coaches for park districts. So we've made a lot of progress uh, in the importance of um, wellness and, uh, and, and the earlier the education, the better. Uh, but being able to be specifically 
this is a good example. Again, the book I mentioned, Hashtag A Sports Parents, I have eight different experts in physical training, mental training, nutrition, parenting, coaching, all throwing their two cents in uh, into what it takes to parent a, uh, uh, a child athlete that might be playing uh, very, very seriously at 12, 13, 14 years old and starting to have all of these concerns about how much is too much. We already know that we're in overkill zone times 20. Uh, this is what really, really also interested Joe. You know, he's a sports dad himself. He was coaching his own kids uh, and, and, and was watching the different pressures and, and behaviors of some of these parents and or coaches. Um, what sport did you, did you play? Did you play sports growing up, Shailene? Uh, softball is my main sport. <laughs> okay. And look what a big deal that's become. You know, we would, uh, people thought, gee, the, she, the pitcher's throwing underhand. She can pitch 10 days a week. And then we said, what are you people crazy? We were running it again to, to the, uh, uh, tremendous amount of overuse. So the ability to raise the awareness big time for parents and coaches and understand that, uh, you know, the parents, that's one of the things iSport360 does, their app. They really bring parents and coaches communication together, which has always been a, a big, big challenge. So we're looking, again, for where our children play, to challenge youth sports to have a tremendous effect on a lot of the good side. Uh, I always had to add that in with Joel because <laughs> there's so many challenges and negatives that you could really dwell on uh, when it comes uh, to youth sports. And that's why I have to ask you the main question, Shailene, which is how's your sports psychology skill? You're going to be working <sighs> with the parents and coaches. How's the, how, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, so it's definitely the mind is it, everything in life is mental. And I think you just have to change your mindset. And once you can change your mindset, then um, that's when change can happen. Um, but based on, you know, we like you had mentioned, we, we have made improvements, but we're not quite there yet. And um, all those improvements are starting with the mindset and just understanding what questions to ask and what are the right questions. Um, I think using, you know, real life examples, um, using the kids feedback and um, real talk in real time um, is, yes. is very And we want to pay attention to the only two things everybody cares about, whether it's the parent or the coach uh, and uh, whether it's the athlete themselves, we want to be able to prevent injuries and prevent problems because they're epidemic. And we also want to be able to enhance fun and enhance performance when indicated. And we want to be able to do these things safely. And this is why we need to raise big time uh, the awareness of some of these concerns. You know, take a look at the last couple of Olympic, Olympics. The best athlete in the world, Simone Biles in gymnastics, you know, said, admitted, you know, I can't do it. I've got mental concerns. You know, the, the mental side of things is really, really thrown um, in, into the uh, f uh, forefront. And then you're going to, of course, as a kinesiologist, you're going to pay big attention, uh, uh, starting with, hey, is your kid in the right shoe, Shailene, or not? <laughs> right. right, literally and figuratively. You know, it's, it's the right shoe, the right fit, the right, the right sport, the right position, uh, the right time in their life, you know, uh, journey in school, what's their home life, life like, you know, um, their grades, there's so much more that matters and there's so much mentally that can alter the way they, they play the game and, and how they feel. Um, and, and even just in those small conversations that I do have w with children, um, they bring up these kinds of concerns and, um, uh, that largely that, you know, lack of mindset and being in the game, if you will, in the right shoe, uh, really does. Do you have a site, um, Jillian? Do you have, do you have the, a site people could find out about what you're looking to put together with the program and the thing? Do you have a, uh, a website or in identification we could find, look at? Yes, and it's just uh, where our, where our children play dot org all together. Okay. Yeah, we're hoping by this, this summer, the spring, you know, the pandemic threw a major, major wrench uh, into the timing of this, to say the least. And it's great to see that we've um, uh, kept up the uh, momentum 
as, as uh, uh, best we could. And uh, so you want to be able to provide a program that involves the physical training side of where this boy or girl might be, whatever their sport happens to be, and paying attention also to uh, their nutrition habits, their lifestyle habits. You know, Joel said in the beginning, um, and we always made a point of it, my late great sports psychologist, Dr. Jim Vickery, I used to drag him when I used to go to talk to parents about using ice and what was the best shoe and what about injuries. And he would have a couple of bullet points for sports parents. And number one was, don't be a critic. He'd say, don't be a critic. Don't be analyzing your son or daughter's performance on the way home in the car, you know. And number two, be a good listener. And these became real, real bullet points uh, for uh, parents and coaches to understand uh, because many times, uh, you know, these kids are dealing with injuries. They're scared to admit it because they might not uh, be able to play. They might be taken out of the game. It's a big problem with concussion concerns uh, as well as other injuries. You know, don't you understand, Dr. Wild? She's got to play next week. She needs two Advil twice a day for a month. Big challenge. Uh, and the better your son or daughter is, the more talented they are, the more the pressure many times uh, uh, mounts. Um, so the uh, ability to offer some of this different advice to some of these people, whether they're on site or not online, it sounds like a real um, uh, valuable uh, uh, cooperation there with our, our friend Joel. Yes, absolutely. Again, awareness is the first step, and, and you bring up a lot of great points about um, being taken out of the game and, um, you know, children even uh, afraid to voice that to their parents, not even the parents, you know, pressuring the coach or, or the child themselves uh, being afraid and wanting to still play and, you know, maybe thinking that their their scholarships dependent on it or um, that sort of thing. So, yeah, let alone uh, the no pain, the, no, the long understood, famous, no pain, no gain. I added what I call the terrible twos, which is doing too much, being too aggressive, overdoing it uh, with these young kids. And we're going to talk more about that. We're talking with Shailene Miller, kinesiotherapist, and the program that she's cooperating with, with the upcoming documentary. He's on next week, Joel Franco. We'll be talking more about it. The Sports Doctor. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. We're back at the Sports Doctor. I'm Dr. Bob Weil, sports podiatrist. We're talking with Shalane Miller and her participation in a program for prevention education when it comes to these young kids uh, in coordination with the upcoming documentary, uh, Where Our Children Play, uh, the challenge of, of youth sports. So, Shalane, what are you looking to include? Like we talked about the nutrition, the mental side. What are you looking to make available um, with some of these people? And once they see the documentary, um, what are you looking to, the bullet points that you're looking to make available for these families and or young athletes? Yeah, um, so first off would be a proper um, strength training plan and the thought process behind um, why they're doing what they're doing, why these exercises are beneficial, what they're working, all the education behind that strength aspect. And then in addition to that, um, nutrition, but it has to be catered towards the, the child. So what co sport are they playing? What position are you playing? What do you like to eat? You don't have to eat things that you don't like. Why are you eating that? Why is that good for your body? So again, the education behind, behind all of that. And then the mental aspect. What are your goals? What are you looking to achieve? Um, I think in life, especially at a young age, that's important to have these goals and a lot of times Sports are an outlet for that. Yeah. So one of the let's, challenges let's many times them. is whether it's the parents' goal. You know, there's a great story. It's a quickie. Uh, the young uh, uh, boy who grew up here in Illinois, Evan Lysacek, who won the 2010 men's Olympic gold medal figure skating uh, uh, Olympic title. He was 10 years old when I put orthotics in his skates, and we uh, uh, had such an incredible ride with this kid. 
after the Olympics, 2010, I had his mom on the radio show, and I asked her that question, Shalane. I said, how did you know whose goal it was? That you weren't overdoing it, blah, 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 was such a big topic. She said, you know, Dr. Bob, uh, Evan had ice time at 6.30 in the morning. I never had to wake him up. <laughs> you know, he was always in the car with his gloves on because he wanted to go. I thought that was such a, a terrific answer. But many times, especially with parents who are good athletes themselves, many times they might have all of these different expectations. Um, and you'll be able to offer these programs wherever somebody lives, whatever they – what ages are you looking at? Um, so right now we're working with teenage, um, more adolescent right now, I think high school, middle school, uh, where by then you should know, like you said, um, if, if you're enjoying your sport, um, where you want to go with it, what your mindset's like, um, and, and um, the, the knowledge that you need to achieve those goals at that point. Yes, you know, the, the chapter in my book is called The Prodigy Sports. And they think gymnastics, think figure skating, even again today, it could be soccer, could be tennis, where you have a young 10, 11 year old, and this is all they want to play. We want to tell them all day, we want you to play different sports, we want to use different parts of the body, so we don't run into these repetitive motion injuries. Uh, and that's great, and this is in one of these particular sports. So again, it's sometimes this type of attention, specialization has become a big deal, uh, again, earlier and earlier, when you see a young Olympian, 17 years old, on the mat in gymnastics, you know she was six when she started or something like that. And uh, so all of these different challenges are things we have talked about on the various interviews the, uh, that I have had when I've had Joel on the radio. We talked about what, what the sports doctor was going to add to this whole concept, again, of awareness and education in the world of, of youth sports. And, and to being able to really pay attention to, the, again, the family dynamics, where we've had experts with divorced parents who might be uh, with a young athlete and or adopted kids and the bullying side of things. Uh, so there's so many different aspects uh, regarding today's world uh, where you have um, social media up to our ears, right? Absolutely. That is a huge culprit, um, not only just in in the sports directly, but in, in the mental aspect, um, you see that a lot with, with the teenagers and, um, what they're doing on their phone and the filters and, um, you can make a lot of things look good. Pictures can say a thousand words. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So like my, our first guest today, Dr. Byrne, the, the holistic optometrist talked about all that screen time on the eye health of these kids as they're growing up, let alone the whole mental side you know, in the mental health side. And again, the bottom line, again, that we want to continue to expand and grow on is the, uh, the kids. We, uh, we need to pay attention to uh, what they're thinking. Uh, we need to be, as parents and coaches, good listeners. And we need to be able to then guide them along so that we can do the two things everybody cares about, starting again with preventing injuries and problems uh, and, and dealing with the epidemic also, Shalane, of over-the-counter pain medicine with growing kids in youth sports. It's an epidemic uh, with we see these, these kids. Dr. Wild, don't you understand if my daughter doesn't take two Advil twice a day, her ankles are killing her, and she's got competitions as, as an example. So this is the education side uh, that we've um, – uh, that I've, I've uh, browbeat Joel <laughs> for the few years uh, in, in some of the different topics. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I think that it all starts with that education and what the parents know and what the parents are used to, and that's what they're teaching their kids. So it's like, well, my mother gave me, you know, to Advil, so I think that that's what I need to do for you. And um, that's just really been the way of the world and the way of medicine for so long. And um, it's, well, it's once we really start awesome depending on it, you know, uh, 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 therapeutic medicines are very, very helpful when supervised. And then once we start to depend on it, once we start, to, I tell parents all the time, it's one of my bottom lines, if your son or daughter needs over-the-counter pain medicine to participate, you're over the line. You've got to back off. I call it intelligent rest. Again, uh, and the better your son or daughter is, whether they're on a traveling team, on a club team, the more we're all familiar with these kinds of, of, uh, of pressures, 
to play hurt and many times to, to overdo it. And we want to take a deep breath and back off that pressure cooker for a lot of these kids uh, where all of a sudden we see uh, the participation rate has reduced. Little League was a great example. Decades ago, they woke up and realized, geez, a third of the kids don't want to continue to play. You know, they, they, they've had it with their parents and whatever. Uh, so the, the challenge continues, right? Absolutely. And, you know, that can also bring up another great point of burnout. You know, you're, the, the kid doesn't want to play anymore, not only because they're sore, but they're burnt out with all the frustration and, and you know, being yelled at or being told what to do. And, and we sucked all the fun right out, right out of the sport and, and what they love. I think it's a huge point. I really, really do. Uh, uh, whether it's very, very serious, where we might see a tennis champion at 16, 17 years old, uh, the, f- the famous name, all of these topics. I knew we'd fly through the Shalane Miller Kinesiology. Give us again the site, uh, Shalane, that people could find out more information about you in the documentary. Yes, whereourchildrenplay.org. Whereourchildrenplay.org. We'll definitely have you back. Great topic. Good luck with this venture. And um, Shalane Miller, Kinesiologist. Thanks so much, Dr. Hold on, Celine. We'll be right back. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. UK Health Radio. The station that makes you feel good. Hey, I think we're back from the Sports Doctor Vin uh, segment where we preview some of the endlessly great guests and topics that we feature on the Sports Doctor. Uh, we add a little Bob Guy to wisdom and we answer a few emails and we touch on uh, some of the endless topics uh, that we stress in the book, uh, hashtag Hey Sports Parents. Uh, great show next week. Dr. Brian Cole, he is the team orthopedist for the Chicago White Sox and the Chicago Bulls. He hosts a popular weekly podcast, Sports Medicine Weekly. Uh, He's uh, excitedly uh, part of our uh, venture with Baseball Blue Book uh, that was established in 1909, the one-stop for all information for the young baseball player, the coaches, the parents, the recruiters, the schools, uh, adding some sports medicine information as they develop their new app. So we're excited about that. Uh, Joel Franco is going to be coming back. Again, we just spoke with uh, Shalane, and we're going to catch up with Joel on where we are uh, with the upcoming documentary, uh, Where Our Children Play, The Challenge of Youth Sports, and uh, keep an eye on him as a sports dad. Following week, uh, again, one of the champions, the world of youth sports, John Eng. Uh, he's the CEO. Uh, I think his dad was the founder of the NAES, the National Alliance of Youth Sports. We've had numerous, Greg Bach, uh, Katie Sabrina, uh, that have been guests, and uh, they recently celebrated their 40th anniversary. That's how long they've been coaching coaches. That's how long they've been teaching and educating coaches in park districts, military facilities and families, uh, and the whole world of uh, youth sports and, and youth sports safety. We're going to stay in that theme the following week with the Reed Malpe. He's one of the champions. He's got a new book. Again, uh, he did con- consulting with the documentary. His perspective, uh, again, on the uh, uh, areas of importance, families and athletes in youth sports. And then uh, Sharky Zartman, my co-author of Hashtag Hate Sports Parents, 
is going to be uh, joining me. She's a uh, podcast host. She's a prolific author of eight or nine books. I participated in a few of them. That's how I was able to uh, lasso her for hashtag a sports parent. And we'll be looking forward. Her, her, her husband and mentor coach, uh, Pat Darton, was a guest of ours a couple of weeks ago um, and gave us some secrets on um, how he developed uh, that young champion in the world of beach volleyball. Bob Guida, you know, Guida paid so much attention to balance. You know, we coined the phrase instability training. The famous piece of equipment was the mini trampoline and the oscillating balance beam, the gymnastics balance beam that had rounded off edges. So you were always unstable wherever you were walking on it, whatever positions you might be taking. Uh, and uh, uh, the idea that regardless of that athlete's sport, regardless of uh, their age, he was including balance work big time. Imagine that baseball player balancing on a mini trampoline with their glove on, catching a ball that's thrown at them at different parts. And again, that instability creates the stabilizers, the areas of the body that help uh, stabilize the joints and muscles and tendons uh, uh, constantly on. Again, if you stand on one foot, close your eyes, you'll experience exactly what we're talking about. Tilt boards, oscillating balance beams, mini trampolines, the new generation sand dune stepper. Uh, again, create imbalance. Strengthen all of these systems. Guida would say strengthen those brakes. Again, all these areas that slow down that particular mode. Think of the tennis player swinging a racket a thousand times a week. And he'd be paying attention to all the muscles that slow it down, control it, stabilize it. Um, and rubber bands were, 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 were uh, an awful big part of some of that. Uh, an email just said, you know, Gary Rhino, you've had him on numerous times in the past. He's the author of the book, Ice. What are your thoughts? My thoughts were I included his philosophies in the book. You know, Gary was a trainer of champions. He's worked with sports, uh, every sport, including the Olympics uh, and rehab. And, and high performance, and he decided years ago to research the whole area of ice. How helpful is it? Is it healing? Is it this? Is it that? And the reality was uh, was surprising to many, many people, which was ice. If anything, it slows down healing. It does numb an area. It's good for pain. But other than that, it slows down the interchanging of fluids that are part of healing. And this was revolutionary when he was talking about this. Tremendous resistance <laughs> came after him. And more and more teams now, more and more sports are incorporating um, the fact uh, that icing and routinely icing and putting ice bags on everything afterwards to reduce swelling is, is just not true. Uh, the, the, all the different testing, whatever that's been done, it was very convenient, it was very inexpensive, it was very easy. So icing became a huge, huge part of rehabilitation and physical therapy, and it's got its place, but it's nowhere near. He, his name of his book is Iced, the Illusionary Treatment Option. You know, again, in the book, uh, uh, Hashtag A Sports Parents, I, I mentioned it with a couple of guests, whether it was the specialization challenges of some of these young kids who were playing the same sport all the time, even if we recommend that they don't, we want to develop different parts of the body. You know, it's surprising. The 80% of the women's gold medal soccer team played different sports, played various sports. They weren't only soccer players. And this is one of these misnomers that if you concentrate specifically on the sport, um, you might be a better athlete. That's not necessarily or better uh, uh, in that sport. It's not necessarily true. I'll tell you one thing, though. It does... Um, add on to the kinds of injuries we see. It's the sports doctor. See you. Thank you.